Check without the punch. And then with. It's this should be called the punch. Hello guys and welcome back. Hope you're doing great. Hope you're doing amazing. Dom here and on this video we're going to talk all about the Cubase stock compressors. Quite a few of you have been asking me about the Cubase stock compressors and what's my opinion about them and what's the difference between each compressor because we have quite a few flavors inside Cubase and I'm going to tell you from the set go that the Cubase compressors are really really capable of some incredible sounds. They have different colors which means you have a lot of different types of compression to play with and if you ask me they could easily be third-party plugins they are that good so in this video i'm going to take you through every single compressor that we have in cubase why i use them how i use them what material i like to run through them some tricks and tips about each plugin each compressor and how you can use it successfully i'm going to run them through vocals through bass through drums and I'm going to show you which one I use for what. So I hope you're ready, I hope you're pumped. Let's jump into Cubase and let's listen to these compressors in action. So in order to make this video easy for you guys to follow, I'm going to take one compressor at a time and I'm going to run it through the material that I, I tend to use it for. So the first compressor I'm gonna try is the tube compressor and this compressor is really nice, really warm. Um, it's an LA-2A style compressor, so just to take away all the mystery behind these compressors, for me, the tube compressor sounds like an LA-2A. It has the characteristics that define the LA-2A sound. And what are those? It's a very smooth, very creamy compressor. It adds nice harmonics to the sound. It's not very fast, but it's actually very pleasing to the ear, especially when you run it with material like vocals, bass, all these things. It gives a nice character and it can add to your sound. So this is the first compressor and, and I'm starting with this compressor just because it's, uh, it's one of the compressors that I reach out quite a lot. So in this case, I'm going to run it through these vocals and the first thing tip I want to give you about this compressor when you use it you will notice that or you might not notice actually that the mix is at 50% by default and the first thing I always do is I go 100% so that I can hear the entire effect of the compressor straight away because sometimes when I first started using this plugin I was like mm, it doesn't do as much as I would expect it to do but the reason is because it's on 50% and there's a good reason for that. It's a great compressor if you want to run it as parallel. But let's stop talking and let's run some material through it. So I'm going to go all the way up to 100% and I'm going to run this vocal. Let's see. I'm saying ain't you tired of waiting we could leave this whole place behind, yeah. So very smooth, as you can see, it's not very fast. It kind of moves with the vocal in a very gentle way, but this gives the vocal a nice, beautiful tone. You know, that's what I'm looking for when I'm using compressors with my material. I'm looking for tone. Um, I tend to automate things. I tend to use the pencil to automate things in Cubase before I get to, into any compression because this always gives you more natural result. The way this compressor works is it doesn't work like a threshold and ratio kind of compressor. The more you drive it, the more compression you're going to get. Now, a very interesting thing about this compressor is that you have this drive control that can add nice warmth to your sound. So let's try it and see how it sounds. I'm saying ain't you tired of waiting we could leave this see how the sound almost breaks this to my ears it reminds me of a nice tube compressor which is at the verge of breaking but it's not really breaking yet but it gives you this beautiful gentle saturation to your vocals which is invaluable in the context of a mix it gives it a little bit of 
push. It's a nice pillow so that your vocals don't get lost in the mix. So let's try a little bit more. I'm going to compress even more. Oh, please be high, yeah. Hold up, I'm saying, ain't you tired of waiting? We can leave this whole place. Be and see, I'm compensating with the output, and you can tell that even though the level is the same, the color is not the same anymore. Check it out. Hold up, I'm saying, ain't you tired? A little bit louder. Waiting, we can leave this whole place behind, yeah. Now, if you want to make the compressor react a little bit faster, you can just make the release a little bit faster, like this, and just add a little bit of uh, open the attack a little bit. Up, I'm saying, ain't you tired of waiting? And with the character, we can change the tonal characteristics of the compressor. Let's try that. I'm saying, ain't you tired of waiting? We can leave this whole place behind, yeah. Go up, I'm saying, ain't so that's without. Ain't you tired of waiting? We can leave this whole place behind, yeah. So beautiful warm, creamy compression style. Um, now, if you want, you can change the ratio from low to high. Uh, if you ask me, this is almost like the peak reduction on an, LA, an LA-2A where you have the compression circuit and then you have the limiter circuit. So that's what this ratio emulates, okay? So let's go with the high and see how that sounds. I'm saying it's tired of See how much of a change it makes. This almost makes it like a limiter that gives you this really snappy attack at the beginning. Check it out. Let's let's go a little bit less with the input. We can leave this whole place behind. Yeah. Hold up, I'm saying it's tired. Of waiting, we can leave. But it makes the vocal really compact, really, really compact. So as you can hear, tones of character. This is a definitely a character compressor. This is uh, not like a clinical or clean compressor, but it does sound really, really beautiful. So this is one of the compressors that I would use for bass, definitely for bass. And uh, I love the LA-2A on the bass personally, the actual unit. So that's one of the reasons why I always reach out for the tube compressor to process my bass. So I have a bass here, let's uh, listen to it without the compressor. So this is very uneven uh, for my taste. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn it on and I'm gonna go all the way up with the mix and uh, let's see what we can get out of this. Faster release so we can let it breathe. Character. Let's go with a high ratio. Okay, and now there's another cool thing that you can do with this. You can even add a sidechain filter. Now, what a sidechain filter is, is basically it allows the compressor to focus on a specific set of frequencies. For example, I can focus maybe on the mid-range, or maybe I want to focus on the low end or the um, on the top end, so I can have a low-pass filter or a high-pass filter. So let's go for the bandpass and now we're going to have the compressor get triggered by the mid-range that we set right here. So let's try it. So if you have a peak noise that it's really annoying on your bass, you can just pinpoint it here, change the Q factor to change the Q, how narrow the filter will be, and then just get rid of it like that. See? Maybe I don't like this. Mm -hmm. 
¿Sí? See how much you can change the sound like this. Now let's go low pass. So low pass basically focuses on the low frequencies, okay? And then if I go high pass, See, now the compressor barely compresses anything because the high frequencies don't have so much energy. So if you want to make your bass sound or your vocals a little bit less harsh or if you have sibilance and all these things, just go on the high pass filter and then the compressor only compresses the high frequencies. Check it out. Mm. And then when I close it, low pass, see how compact it makes the sound. So if you've ever been wondering what this SC thing is right there on the tube compressor, that's what it is. It's actually a very versatile compressor and if you play with the filters you can also leave the mid-range breathe a little bit but you can you compress the low end which is what you really want to be compact and to be assertive and not fluctuate up and down when you have a bass. So that's what I'm doing here. See? Without it, boom, it goes up and down. But then it grabs. But the mid-range is still open because we've used the sidechain filter. So, this is the tube compressor. Let's move on to the next one because the next one is also very good. And here it is. This is the vintage compressor. So, a little bit of background. This is an 1176 style compressor. If you're familiar with an 1176, you'll be right at home. You have your input where you basically drive the compressor and you get more gain reduction. You have the output so that you can compensate. And then we have the attack and the release. And we also have the ratio. So we have 2, 4, 8, 20. It can be a very drastic, very powerful compressor. But there's another thing on the Cubase version that makes it really special. And it, this is this punch button right here that allows the transients to go through, resulting in a very compressed, but at the same time, very dynamic and punchy sound. So I'm going to play these drums here. I'm going to play them live just for the fun of it. Um, and um, let's see. Okay, that's without the compressor. So now let's add the um, vintage compressor. And I'm trying to retain the same level, okay? Now, this is a very classic, very typical 1176 style compression. So it's very punchy. Okay, and I've added the punch straight away. Check without the punch. And then with. It's... This should be called the punch. It's so punchy. It's really nice. And then, of course, we have the release where we can make it really fast so it pumps even more. And then if I want, I can simply remove the punch, compress super drastically, and now I can mix between the compressed signal 
and the uncompressed signal so I can retain dynamics but I can still get this really nice and big drum sound and this is basically New York style compression, parallel compression, right? So everything in one plugin. Let's try. See how much it's compressing, let's see. Okay, without it. With. You know, super powerful, super punchy, my go-to Cubase compressor for drums, hands down, no question about it. Now, I still like to use this compressor for vocals. So well, if we go back to our vocal here, and it gives me a different flavor compared to the tube compressor. Now, why would I use this? I would use it for like rock vocals, for hip hop vocals, for vocals that are fast, that need a fast attack and a fast compressor because the tube is a little bit more creamy, more, you know, sparkly, beautiful. This is aggressive, you know, this is aggression. So for hip hop, for rap, all these things. Um, let's try with this vocal and see the flavors that we can get out of it. Let's go, uh, I'm saying, ain't you tired? I'm waiting, we can leave this whole place behind, yeah. Let's go, uh, I'm saying, ain't you tired? I'm waiting, we can leave this whole place behind. Check out, pay attention to the attacks. So with the tube compressor and the vintage compressor, you have the most iconic compressors inside Cubase without spending a dime. So I hope you have a better understanding of the vintage compressor. Let's move on to the last compressor that I'm going to talk about on this video. And this is the stock Cubase compressor, which is simply called Compressor. And I'll tell you straight away why you should use this plugin, this compressor. It's a very clean compressor. It doesn't have a, a lot of character, but it gets the job done. It's almost like a, a digital console compressor. Like, it reminds me a little bit of the Oxford um, console compressor. It has a very effective reduction and it can help you tame dynamics of the sound. You know, the synth, the vocal, a bass, a kick drum, a snare, but it does it in a very transparent way and this is something that quite a few times you might want you might want the compressor to do its job to be transparent and not impart any characteristics or any saturation or any audible character to the sound so this is a very good example and just to give you another idea uh, i would totally go and try and use the vst dynamics plugin for vocals, for processing vocals, because it's a very easy solution when you want to get into the sound that you want. For example, for this vocal, I can start. Let's go, uh, I'm maybe I want to add a gate to get rid of uh, some ambient noise or maybe some uh, hum. So we go like this and then you just turn the threshold up and down until you get to a point where you have just the noise cut off, but not actual vocals, you know? Okay, so let's try this. Saying, ain't you tired? I'm waiting, we can leave this whole place behind, yeah. Let's go, love, I'm saying. So I would be very careful with gates, because with gates, it's very easy to have these really choppy breath sounds and all these things. I wouldn't use a gate to get rid of breaths, I would honestly do it manually. 
Um, and there's a very cool video with uh, Greg Ondo where he shows you a macro on how to get rid of breaths very easily in Cubase. Um, and um, the next thing is the compressor, of course. Let's try the compressor. Let's go, love. I'm saying it's tired. I'm waiting we can leave this whole place behind. Yeah. See, it does its job. It tames that vocal, it tames the dynamics so they don't jump out at you like, oh, it's like a loud phrase. But it doesn't have a very specific character. You don't really hear it, which is great, if you ask me. Uh, sometimes you don't want to hear the compression. Yeah. Let's go, love. I'm Without it. Ain't you tired? I've been waiting. We could leave this whole place behind. Yeah. So very transparent sound, very cool. But now I'm going to tell you the main and biggest reason I use the compressor plugin in Cubase, and that is sidechain. It's just brilliant for sidechain. It's so easy to set up, you set and forget. In actual fact, when I load the plugin inside Cubase, I already have my sidechain preset as a default preset because I know that 90% of the time I'm going to use this compressor for sidechaining. So let's see how I use it. I'm, I have this drum loop right here and I have um, Retrolog instance and let's uh, bring up the compressor plugin. So we have a nice warm lush pad with the uh, retrolog, but maybe I want to get a little bit of movement by side chaining this with this kick drum. So how do you do it? It's actually very easy in Cubase. So let's have a listen. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring up my compressor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on this icon right here and I'm going to add a side chain input. In this case, I'm going to use this kick drum and I'm gonna go zero, okay? And now I can close this and activate sidechain. And now I'm going to sidechain this pad to this kick drum. Let's listen. And depending on what kind of feel I want to get, I just play with the release and the threshold. So if I want to get like a very square, you know, see this kick drum, if I go all the way down with the threshold, it's going to basically compress pretty much the same. It won't take into account these drops in volume for the kick drum. So if you want to retain this, just go a little bit higher with the threshold. If you want to have like a longer release, just up the release, let it breathe let the music guide you, you know? This is all about listening, it's not about numbers, okay? So let's play, I'm gonna play a little bit with the release so you can hear the difference in the sound. See? I like this. If I go hold, it just lasts. I like this, let's try. So I would go with, um, you know, with a threshold a little bit higher up if I was going to sidechain a bass to a kick drum and I just want the reduction in volume so that they don't eat too much space in the mix. But this is a little bit more creative. This actually adds groove to a static pad, okay? So I'm gonna go a little bit more drastic with this. You know, change the attack a little bit. So see how many different sounds I can get out of the stock compressor plugin when it comes to sidechain. It's really powerful and um, I use it all the time. It's just, uh, you know, if you took it away from Cubase, I would be 
really missing this plugin. So don't underestimate and don't forget the Humble Compressor plugin because it's actually very, very good. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I hope you have a good understanding now of the compressors that we have inside Cubase. Uh, like I said, they're really powerful. You really need to take a look and appreciate the sounds that they can give you and the different colors that you can get out of each plugin. So I hope this gives you a little bit of food for thought to play with these compressors and get creative. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. You know that it really, really helps me create more videos for you guys. And if you're new to the channel, maybe you want to consider subscribing. Thank you so much, guys. Compress away and have loads of fun.